So this is a ride I did up north near Bala, starting from Lake Vernwy. Um, it takes in a few fairly prominent climbs such as Hernent Pass and Volker Grois, but I really just wanted to show the amazing scenery and great roads there are to ride on. So the first six miles of my ride was just getting from one side of the lake to the other, which would objectively be a very nice ride. But I've adopted the mentality of avoid flat roads at all costs, which has resulted in me becoming absolutely intolerant of them, and I just wanted to get to the first climb. Um, so this is the backside of Fernand Pass, and as a pure climb, or as like an effort, it's not brilliant because it's very undulating and also quite narrow, but it's a super nice road just to ride. So you can tell by the climb profile, there's some pretty steep sections in the double digits, but there's also quite a few significant little downhill bits. So you gain a little less than 200 meters in a bit under three kilometers. Not too demanding, but really amazing scenery. A bit narrow in some places with poor road surface, but didn't take any of the enjoyment out of it. I mean, whenever there's a segment called Harry Potter scenery, it's bound to be brilliant. was good wasn't it sorry for that bonus content from 10 years ago big harry potter fan uh i apologize for the footage i know it's quite annoying to watch sped up uh rear camera footage <clears throat> especially when i stand up and it just goes lurching all over the place but i really wanted to give a feel of what all the roads are like to ride so i found it really difficult to cut out sections You climb through a forest and then as you get to the top it all drops away and you're in this really barren landscape. So now I'm descending what's kind of the official side of Hernet Pass. It's really open. You can see the whole road stretching out in front of you. So it's quite a fun descent. So I flipped it around at the bottom and just started the climb. You can see the road just stretching out in front of you, which I'm usually not a fan of. It can be quite mentally daunting to just see it all in front of you. But as this was the first time I'd ridden it, I was just pretty excited to be doing it. So I actually quite enjoyed it, especially after riding up the other side, which is a little, well, I wouldn't say claustrophobic, but you're kind of constantly expecting a car to come whizzing over a blind crest. Uh, so it was nice being able to see all the potential obstacles ahead. So Hernant Pass is about 2 kilometers at 8%. I don't know why, but for some reason I thought it was going to be a lot steeper. Yeah, I tried to just ride it hard. Um, 
looking at my power afterwards, it was, wasn't very good. But it felt way harder than... <laughs> Felt way harder than my power numbers would suggest, so uh, we'll just ignore that. And I feel really, really bad about having this car stuck behind me. Uh, they're very patient, but yeah. Usually I'd probably pull over and let them pass, but I was trying to ride kind of hard and they weren't, they were giving me quite a lot of space. Um, and then when they passed me, I realized they had two bikes on the roof. So yeah, that was really nice of them. Thank you. And I got to the steepest section and I was kind of standing up and sprinting for the top. Even though I literally just ascended it, I don't know why I thought the top was around the corner. Because uh, I got around that and realized there was still a good few hundred meters to go. So I was kind of dying at the end a little bit.
So I descended back down to the lake and then started going back myself. But after a few miles, I turned off up this other climb, which heads up towards Bulpy Royce. This is another kind of ridiculously undulating climb, about four and a half kilometers, and the average is only 3.9%. Uh, so once again, not really a climb you can go and smash, especially as it's pretty narrow. There's this really nice section where you kind of leave the trees behind you and there's a stream on your left and you quite rapidly climb above that. Uh, yeah, just a really cool scenery to be in. Uh, yeah, it started raining towards the top, which was lovely. Uh, and then you get to this junction, the Iron Cross Junction, which is uh, I'm very familiar with. And you can either descend Bulku Royce, the main way here, or continue to the top. If you go right, it continues climbing for a few more minutes, which is what I did. Uh, because then I was descending, started descending this road towards Bala. Um, I didn't go all the way down because the last few kilometers are quite flat and the weather wasn't too good. Um, that was kind of my plan anyway. I've ridden up this side once before and I just, yeah, there's a long flat section at the bottom so I just wanted to do the nice, climb, nice part of the climb.
So this segment is about three and a half kilometers at 7.3%. There's a little flat bit in the middle as well. Initially, it's quite an inconspicuous climb, but as is the case with lots of roads around here, you suddenly emerge in this really desolate landscape with stunning views behind you. There's also very little service around here, which enhances that feeling of being in the middle of nowhere. Uh, yeah, I just love it. And I know it's been said many times, but there's something really taxing about riding on British lanes. Uh, and these ones are fairly tame by typical British lane standards, uh, with fairly good visibility and road surface, but you still have to stay switched on the whole time, whether you're climbing or descending. Uh, like constantly having to anticipate cars coming around blind corners or random rocks in the road. Uh, obviously, riding up proper mountains uh, in like the Alps comes with its own set of difficulties. Uh, like you might do a ride with similar elevation gain, but chances are it would just take in one or two main climbs with a few long descents, as opposed to a ride like this, which is constantly just rolling up and down steep pitches. Yeah, it gets quite demanding, but sometimes it's just the most fun kind of ride out there. and uh, you get some really good views down towards Bala, which unfortunately my rear camera got a bit wet. Uh, so it obscures some of it, but yeah, it's a really nice bit of road as well. And then I'm back at the Iron Cross Junction. So this is descending down the main way of Volker Grois, um, my favorite road in the world. So I went all the way to the bottom and flipped it around. Borka Grois is the second highest pass in Wales. Gospel Pass in South Wales is slightly higher, but this one is far superior. So I'd recommend giving Gospel Pass a miss and uh, heading up north. So Borgu Royce is just under three kilometers at 12.5%. Um, but yeah, the beginning is quite gentle. You've got this pretty steep bend and then it's just kind of hard all the way. And I know it's probably biased, but I do think Borgu Royce is the best climb in Britain. I've done a lot of crazy ones and there's still many to be discovered, but the combination of the length the relentless nature and the views just make it a fantastic climb. 
like no matter how you ride it it's always going to be tough to get up but it's also fairly straightforward there's no like surprise features there's no ridiculously narrow bits or bad road surface uh, it's just kind of you and the hill i've only actually ridden the entire climb from the very bottom once before um which was quite a bit faster than i'm riding it here and it was a lovely sunny day so most of the climb is just in the low double digits um the bulk of the climb should i say <laughs> uh, and then when you get to this castle grid here it gets quite nasty so this segment from the castle grid to the Iron Cross Junction is where I did my first Everest. And this segment is 0.64 kilometers at 17.5%. And oh, look how nice that pure block of red looks. Just what you want from a climb. So I've done this segment 146 times. That's from an Everest plus a few failed attempts, or as I call them, practice runs so yeah it's quite weird to ride up here with normal gearing on my bike um but yeah really enjoyed it this video is from my half everest uh shortly before i stopped after severely underestimating the gearing i'd need I just remember when I started Everesting, the first like hour I spent the whole time looking behind me at these dark clouds that were rolling in. Um, kind of reminded me a bit of that today. Uh, and this video was from the end of my Everest. Um, you can kind of get an idea of how slow I was going. And it's a bit of a full body workout as well, because it's so steep, you're kind of forced uh, over the bars. So yeah, it's quite hard on the arms as well. Do another one.
Uh, and then I just popped uh, back down to the cattle grid and back up, just why not? And then after that, I just descended back down to the lake and finished with a few flat miles. Uh, I would have liked to just stay up here for a while, but it's starting to rain. I didn't really fancy a really wet descent, so. So yeah, I absolutely love this ride. Um, it was great to do some new climbs along with ones I'm familiar with. And obviously there's a lot more to be discovered in this area, uh, which hopefully I'll get to do one day. Thanks for watching. Sorry it was a mess of a video, mainly me just talking about myself. Um, wasn't supposed to be like that. But hopefully it's uh, shown some of the amazing roads in the area. The amount of times I've used the word amazing in this video uh, hopefully just sums it up really. So yeah, thank you.